Amen. Come on, put those hands together and give God praise, somebody. Put those hands together and give God praise, somebody. Thank you, Judah. Amen, amen, amen. God is so faithful, so good. Thank you, musicians, thank you, Tim. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, all musicians. I just love the Lord. As I young adults get ready for worship, hold up your Bibles, everybody, before they go out. And let's declare together, Lord, I thank you that I have the Bible. The sound is wonderful. God's perfect copy to my life of basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but also a doer. And my life is so much better. Because of the word of the living God. Therefore I declare my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be distracted. But I will hear the word of the Lord today. And as a result of what I hear, I'm going to leave here better than I came. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody help me praise God. Amen. Come on, I wish somebody would really help me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. Can you just go to somebody and say, I thank God and I'm in love with Jesus and I love you. Come on, just somebody in your vicinity. Amen. Somebody in your seats. Amen. As we take the children's places, they move out. Amen. God is here with you. Hallelujah. When you're up against the struggle that shatters all your dreams and your hopes are fully crushed by Satan's manifested schemes and you feel the urge within you to submit to earthly fear. Don't let the faith you're standing in
Suppose that don't work. And suppose this happened. Suppose that happened. No, I'm here to declare Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And those works have been manifested in so many ways. But a few of them are the following. Uh, deception, hindrances, and opposition. In fact, the name Satan means opposer, opposer. So, so we want you to understand Jesus came to destroy the works of the opposer and the accuser. He came to destroy the works of fear, division, hatred, and strife. He came to destroy the works of death, yes he had, the works of sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and any other work of the devil you can ever think about. Somebody help me say, Jesus came to destroy it. Uh, so all of these works of the devil, if you would just bear with me for a few more moments, all of these works of the devil, Jesus came to destroy. God's truth, the truth, the truth of God, and the truth of his word are the truth, and the truth in his word is the truth that completely destroys the work of the devil. So, so I want you to start allowing yourself to fall in love again with truth. Because we live in a time where lies mean more than the truth. Yes. A lie, and I don't like quoting Adolf Hitler, and I mean no harm, but this is one of the right things he said, everything else, God help him. Uh, I wouldn't want to be in this place in eternity. But, but what I will say is a, uh, Adolf Hitler once said that you tell a lie enough times it becomes a truth. And aren't we seeing that today in social media? Aren't we seeing that today with haters and gossipers? Aren't we seeing that today with folk that just have all kinds of crazy divergent agendas? They'll get a piece of a fact. They'll get a piece of some information. Say it again and 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 again. And, again. and, and the truth gets lost because let's admit it, we love the sensational, we love the gossip, we love my God drama going on. I'm gonna get your name up talking to you. So, so truth, it gets buried in agenda, it gets buried in a lot of foolishness. And, and quite frankly, truth is like turning a light on when somebody's asleep. They get upset with you because truth brings about a standard of the way it should be. Truth cannot be eradicated by a lie, but truth always destroys a lie. But the problem is, there is singularly truth first, but, but then a lot of lies got to be told to cover up truth. Or to add on to the lie already told. Now, now I don't want you to look around, I just want you to look at me. How many have ever been in a situation I had with the device to be a bad liar? My God, that I told a lie to cover up the lie that the lie was before I told the lie that was. And after a while, the lie that I told, I forgot the lie that I told, and I couldn't repeat the lie that I told, so I'd make them another lie about the lie that I told in order to get out of lying and being caught in it. Don't ask me to say that again. But I need y'all to recognize and fully understand that, beloved, it seems easier to tell a lie than the truth. But I need you to understand a fact about truth. Truth has no equal because truth is God. Jesus said something we'll read in a moment about this fact about truth. But truth has no equal. Therefore, a lie is not the opposite of truth. A lie is the absence of truth. Just like light has no equal, darkness is the absence of light. One little bit of light curses the darkness. Truth curses lies. My God, beloved, so why are we talking about all that? Because I need you to understand that Jesus doesn't only speak the truth, he is the truth. Oh, God, have mercy. So, so, so this alone, can I break this down for a few more moments? This alone with John's gospel, my God, when he says that in the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was with God, and then he says down further in the text that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory full of grace and truth. But other God's word is truth. But I need you to understand that because of this fact in the scripture, 
God and his word are one. God is the word. Jesus is the word. He is the word. But then we look at John 14 and 6 where we understand that Jesus is the word according to John 1. But in John 14, 14, John 14 and 6, the Bible says that Jesus said, not me, not a writer writing about him. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So again, let's learn a lesson. I know all of you all didn't go to Polly. Amen. You didn't have that great privilege. Amen. Polly. Amen. Great school with math. And I don't tease him, but I need you to ride with me today. My God, beloved. But we, I learned something in geometry in Polly that they didn't teach in city called the transitive property of geometry. The transitive property of geometry says that if A equals B and B equals C, then A translates to what? Equals C. Transitive property of geometry. If A equals B, then B equals C, then A equals C. So if Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and then he also said in John that he is the word, and not only spoke the word, but his word, can we then also say that the word is truth? Can y'all see what I just did? So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the word. Not only he spoke the word, he is the word. So the word of God is truth. So truth always destroys the works of the devil. So when Jesus came, are y'all with me now? And he declared in 1 John 3 and 8 that I came to destroy the works of the devil. His main tool is not just feeling the power of God. Jesus' main tool to destroy the works of the devil is the word of God. Yes, 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 yes. So that truth is the word of God. Oh, I feel like preaching today. That truth is the word of God. And it is the word of God that destroys the works of the devil. So what I need you to understand, beloved, he confirmed that when he had the battle with the devil, the rumble in the wilderness, the war in the wilderness, when the devil came to him after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, him and the devil could have been the one to slam him on the table. Jesus could have hit him with a chair. Jesus could have body slammed him and, and knocked him out. But he didn't even wink an eye. He spoke the word. When the devil came to him and said, look at here, make these stones bread, Jesus said, it is written. The word man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Word. Then when the devil tried to tempt him with pride and arrogance, Jesus whooped his tail again. When the devil tried to make him jump off the temple pinnacle, and Jesus body slammed the devil with the word. He said, "Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God." In the name of the Lord, he shall not tempt the Lord thy God to come in any wise. Back up man's pride. He beat the devil down and then he put a choke slam on him and he ended the fight with the last thing when the devil told him and took him up to the high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. Showed him all the kingdoms of the earth and one moment and said, If you fall down and worship me, I'll give it to you. And Jesus said, You shall only worship the Lord our God, and only shall you serve. Satan couldn't take that church slam, my God, but the truth. Right, right. And he left Jesus alone. What am I trying to tell you? When you speak the word, you speak the truth. And the truth destroys every word of the devil. What am I trying to tell you? You don't have to yell at the devil. That's what a whole bunch of church folk think that's going to move the devil out your way. My God, you don't need to yell at the devil. Yes, have passion in your prayer. But you don't have to yell at the devil. You don't have to talk to the devil too much. Just speak the word. We think by emotion the devil will move. The devil get emotional too. Yes. He moves because you speak the word. Yes. The word. Yes. Somebody say thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Why? Because the word is truth. truth. And because Satan is a deceiver, he can't stand truth. Truth. Right. Truth exposes him. Yes. It lets you know who he is, what he's all about, and where he's about to go. That's right. Because he cannot stand truth. That's a good place to praise God right now. 
So, so as we've been talking uh, dealing about deliverance for the last few weeks, I want you to understand that deliverance comes because when you are involved with the truth, you must be set free. Y'all don't hear me over here, so y'all still look at me. So let me talk to y'all for a few minutes till they wake up. I think they got hammered on the phones. Okay, I don't know what they got, you know. But, but I need some help over here that when God speaks his word, his word is true. And when you need deliverance, you need the truth. Amen. So today I want to talk about the truth of that. Because you will never get delivered believing a lie. You will never be set free believing a lie. Okay? So, so what I need you to understand that when it comes to deliverance from bondage, truth is key. Somebody say truth is key. Truth is key. Truth is key. It's essential for the following reasons. Because lies and deception is what causes the bondage. For instance, okay? You think that getting high is going to solve the problem. And most folk really know it more. They'll know it with a anesthetize or deaden the pain for a short amount of time. But when you come down from the high or sober up from the drunk, you will find your problem was probably there and you got something more on top that you created while you was out your mind. Amen. Yes. See, that y'all ever been drunk, so maybe I ain't talking to you. No, you've never been high, so maybe you don't understand. When you come off of that, the problem is worse, not better. But I need to feel better for the moment. Living for a moment, although you live in moments, living for the moment is cutting your life short. Because as long as you live, you will have moments, not moment. So you don't make a decision in a moment because you have following moments that will be impacted by that moment. And you need to keep up momentum so your life won't be destroyed. So you do not make decisions from a moment. But a lot of us believe the lie that because I'm living in a moment, that a moment does not have to worry about moments. But when you count to 10, each number has individual importance. You can't get to 10 without going to 5. Oh man, I feel like preaching. You can't live your life based on a moment. You can only live your life when you consider moments. And each moment needs the moments. So I cannot make a decision based on a moment because in the moment, there may be a lie. And if I base my life on a moment of lies, I will be bound. My God. And that's why a lot of people are in bondage. That's why a lot of people have habits they can't break. Because the moments turned into moments doing the same thing but expecting different results. And that is a key definition for insanity. You cannot keep doing destructive things and expect to stay free. Oh, the boy preaching that. So, so I need folks to start realizing, recognizing, and understanding that I need to be better at not allowing lies. Somebody say, I can't allow a lie to dictate my life. Okay? That's why, let me tell you the truth. I'm neither Republican nor Democrat, but let me help you to understand. That's why I don't get bent out of shape about anything anybody's. Come on. Because both sides have an agenda. You know, we don't have to make that out to me. Both sides have an agenda. Everybody wants you to leave their point. So I, I want the truth. Half the folk are mad about Donald Trump. Half the folk are mad about Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats. Half the folk want to make America great. Half the folk want to keep America the way it is. Half the folk don't want America to be great. And I'm still here like, Lord, I want your will in this state. I want your agenda because when I watch whatever network, everybody got their slant in their bin. And I need to go to the word to find out what the truth is. Wow. Yes, that's, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Obviously, this is not a political message. But, you know, I just need folks to stop getting caught up in politics. Abortion is not a political issue. When we're caught up, the nation's divided now. Again, 
of abortion. And Nation is divided over the fact that folk are sneaking over the water and taking up jobs that normally people would take. Folk are mad about everything, everything, everything. Folk hate you if you're white. Folk hate you if you're black. Folk hate you if you're Latino. Folk hate you if you're Caribbean. Folk hate, hate, hate. And we all sitting around mad at each other. Everybody on edge. Can I tell you why? Because the devil went through a hornet's nest of lies in humanity. Yes. And we all are on edge. Don't you say nothing. Don't you wear that t-shirt. Don't you wear that hat. Don't you give me that leaflet. Don't you come around talking about liberal or conservative or progressive. And I'm just going to say that I need more Jesus than anything else. If somebody else If Jesus is going to pay the bills, yes. If Jesus is going to help me and my family straight, yes. If Jesus is going to help me pay my taxes, yes. That's really the bottom line. What will Jesus do? Because promises, promises, promises are going to influence you to believe my lie. But I need to have discernment by the truth so I won't be in a moment, but be in my moments to make my life all the better. I need somebody to help me understand. I don't need politics. I need prayer. I need praise. I need participation in the work of God. Yes, I know that we ought to partake in the politics of our day political system. One vote, one person, one person, one vote. But God have mercy. When I've done what I know to do, the word says that righteousness exalts a nation. But 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 but, but all the other junk is a reproach to any people. The word says bless whose nation God is. My God, bless the nation whose God is the Lord. See, I need the word. So truth is essential because it delivers you from lies. Tell somebody we all need to be delivered from lies. And, and lies, again, I declare, is what causes bondage and is what keeps the bound in bondage. As long as you believe a lie, you're tired. I wish I had two people help me. As long as you believe a lie, you're tired. One is bound, number one, when you receive lies. And that's why you gotta be careful the conversations you listen to. Because if you're around lies all the time, then you will lose an appetite for the truth. Amen. You wouldn't know it if it hit you between the eyes. Number two, you know when you're bound, you not only receive lies, you believe lies. Yeah, yeah. So I can tell you right now, right here and now, that the roof is on fire. And I ain't talking about the dance move from the 80s. Don't move. Don't move. I talk about I'm talking. <laughs> We're way back on some of y'all. Y'all still saying that you need to come into the two times. But <laughs> at the moment of power, we can come out for a But I need you to understand, beloved. Somebody can tell you for your own good the roof is on fire, and you'd be like, yeah, boy, yeah. And you think you know it's a cliche. And you and they get burned up. Because you were believing a lie. You believe in a lie. That's why some of you may not know this. It is against the law to, well, to yell fire in a crowded but It's actually a law. <laughs> somebody can't be playing the joke. They get arrested because it caused a riot and a ruckus. Somebody get tranquil and destroyed. That person who lied and said there's a riot and caused a uh, stampede will be arrested if folks find out about it because it's a law because a lie can cause destruction. Mm. One is bound you know, when they not only receive lies and believe lies, one is bound when lies are the and helpless. You believe the lies so long, you, you just can't get it. You just can't get out of it. Okay? Thus, at that point, deliverance is required. When you believe lies, heard lies, receive lies so long, deliverance is required. So let's turn it on to the close. Because I want to talk about the truth so we can be free. We're going to make a declaration together. Then I'm going to give y'all some information. We're going to praise God. Y'all ready? So, so let's look at John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Y'all there? John 8, I'm Brian Glad has it on the board. So glad y'all came out today. It means so much to me that, that you all heard what I asked. And uh, thank you. John 8, 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word. 
Then are ye my disciples, my disciplined ones. Indeed, here's the text. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Notice the word make is here. Not so many times we can quote it and say, set you. It will do that. But there's a reason why Jesus said the word make. And we're going to go through that in a minute. Say, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth makes you free. The word make is so important here. And we'll come back to it. Look also at 1 John 2.21. 1 John 2.21. Tell somebody, I love the truth. Okay? I love it, I love it, I love it. Because without the truth, I can't adjust to do what I need to do to get myself right. First John 2, 21 declares, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. No, I correct you because you didn't know the truth. But because you know it, this is what John says, and that no lie is of the truth. So there is no modicum of truth in a lie. So I know some will say they are partial truths. No. Ah, I must say, and I've come to realize this, it's either the truth or it's a lie. There is no in between. There is no gray area. It's either the truth or a lie. Because you know when the devil met Adam and Eve, Ronnie, in the Garden of Eden, Ronnie number one, you know what happened. He told a partial truth. No, he told a lie. He used the truth to frame his lie. God have mercy. He used the truth to fabricate his lie. But there was no truth in what he said. Because the moment a partial truth is parched or spoken from your lips, it is a lie. There is no middle ground. There is no mistaking what it is. A lie is 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 a lie. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's been a young words. It, it, it just ain't true. So partial truth is still a Somebody asked you how I look today. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You'll get by. Voila. Go on to the side and say, um, the rain in spade falls mainly on the plane. Say something, but don't lie. Somebody asked you the honest question, is my slip hanging? Do I look fat in this, this, this pair of pants? <laughs> Husbands, I know we don't want to get in no trouble. Baby, you don't look fat, but maybe something more flattering can be placed in front. You know, or not, baby, you are halfway and you'd rather go out and she look like nine miles of battery and you're wondering why you're right back and that's your wife. Or, honey, should I wear the shirt inside or out? And you don't look well if you wear the shirt inside, that gut buster will be out. And you're like, I want to cover up that muscle. See, now I'm talking about myself. I got, I'm working on this, getting my six pack back. I'm down, my God, to a two pack. So, <laughs> while I'm in the process, I want to get the six pack back. I cover it up, I take it, and I cover up. So, I'm being honest with you. I don't want you to focus on my two pack. Because it's no longer just a one pack, it's not a keg anymore. I'll get that in the morning. But I need you to understand, beloved, the moment we introduce deception or a lie and try to use the truth to frame it, we corrode the lie and it becomes, I've actually corroded the truth. And truth corroded is a lie. Yes. So to be delivered, we need an appetite for the truth. Yes. Yes. No matter how uncomfortable it makes us feel that we think we everything in our minds. A lie will make you stay in deception yes. and won't bring you to a place that you're lifted in order to be what God would have you to be. Wow. So we don't lie to our children and let them know that there's a Santa Claus because there is no. And if a red man with a white beard tries to come down your chimney or come in your door and turn ho, 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 he said, no, 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 you put him away. So, so y'all know good and well, we're not in those times where children need lies, telling the truth. Because half of them know already, there ain't no Santa Claus. They ain't even knowing you bring the gifts, they know where you hide them. That's right. And they understand that, all they know my dad, tell me the truth, tell me the truth. I mean, one time. Everybody said, long time ago. Long time. 
my wife and I were dealing with something in our home, and, and uh, you know, the, you know, I'm just gonna say the lights went out. Long time ago. I mean, how much y'all think I, I never had no lights go out? Because I had. Some of y'all have it too, so don't look at me like that. Amen. And, and, and <laughs> I said a long time ago. And a long time ago, my lights went out, and, and my son said, Dad, can you watch TV? I said, No, son, the TV's broke. <laughs> that was a. But you were trying to spare a young child from the trauma of adult problems. No. I should have said, Son, Dad got to take care of something to get the lights back on. That's the truth. But I told him the TV is broke. Mm -hmm. So when I paid the bill later that afternoon and the lights came back on before I paid it at 3 o'clock, he meant because you got to pay the TV before 3 o'clock to get the stuff back on. When the man said, y'all was like, I didn't know you knew that. Yes, I did. I said, a long time ago. I paid them stuff back on. When we came home from school, my dog, TV was on. He was back watching Dragon Ball Z and all that crazy stuff. And, and he said, Dad, you got the TV fixed. I said, yeah, second five. So, so I didn't help him by lying to him because I gave him a false understanding. I know we want to protect our children from the ill and the evil, but beloved, tell your children the truth. Just tell them I can take care of something. They don't need to know you got your stuff shut off. I got to take care of something, okay? But you got to understand, beloved, we do no one no favors when we lie to them. Let's just bring it pragmatically. Recently, we going through some of the health crisis in my family, and I wanted it straight. I wanted it straight. I wanted it straight. You know, doctors try to be all political and try to talk all this stuff. And I'm like, how can I know what to pray for if you're telling me that there's a rosy outcome when you know good and well that ain't going to end that way? How can I know what to attack in the realm of the spirit if you don't tell me the truth? We're fighting devils. We're fighting principalities and powers. And his main desire is to deceive you so you won't know the truth. Why? Because the truth makes you free. So, beloved, somebody got to say to your neighbor, I want to fall in love with the truth more and more. Amen. Oh, y'all don't want to still be lying to you. But let me give you this word and let you know. The truth, everybody say the truth. Makes you free. Say it again. The truth makes you free. Say it again. The truth makes you free. Now, the word makes, and let's get ready to go. So, y'all get some out of this today. The word make denotes a process. Okay? Think about it this way. Think about it from this. A kid. Everybody say kid. Ross, let's get it. Shot the kid. So, in order for a cake to be eaten, it must be made, and a process must be taken. Why do you buy a cake in the store or make a cake on your own? At the end, you get a cake. But I dare say that process is what makes the cake taste different. from scratch from somebody who knew what they were doing. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, y'all, I got some witnesses in here. My wife hates school boy cake. I mean, she, she, she's a caterer. She, she's retired from caterer, but she, she understands every now and then she gets back into that, and, and, and she knows the difference. So when we go out to eat in a restaurant or something, we get dessert. She says in the heartbeat, this cake is scoreboard. Nobody, nobody. I mean, it's like, and I said, baby, how do you know it's scoreboard? Because she said, ain't no love in it. And I, I finally got a definition about what I fear parenting calls love in, in terms of cake and cooking. The word love is translated as the word bye. In a cake made from scratch, there's plenty of butter in it. In most scoreboard cakes, there's shortening. And I know mama's little baby loves shortening bread, but if I want a real good cake, I want my cake made from somebody that made it from scratch that know what in the world they're doing. I don't want no crisp in my cake. 
I want some love in my cake. So when you bake a cake, you make a cake. And it, it, it involves process. Process. It involves the right ingredients, the right utensils, and the skill of the man. Have I told you my story real quick about my peanut butter jelly cake? Some of y'all didn't know one day she was gone. My God, and I tried my hand to try to say I could cook. So I was trying to satisfy to make myself think I could cook. So I decided I'm going to make a cake. And I decided, I looked around for ingredients that were none in there but flour, peanut butter, and jelly. So I decided I'm going to make me a peanut butter and jelly cake. So I took a few spoonfuls of peanut butter and dumped it in the cake bowl. I took a few spoonfuls, big spoonfuls of jelly. <laughs> Dumped it in a, a, a big bowl. And, and I knew enough to take some eggs and some water. And, and that's all I did. I mixed it all up. I was stirring for a while, stirring that peanut butter and put more water in it. <laughs> hey, my God, because the peanut butter wasn't stirring that well. And I was stirring for all I was worried. I got my muscle worked out that day. Oh, God, kept stirring, kept adding more peanut butter, kept adding more water, kept adding more jelly. My God, and one more egg. I finally got a mixture I thought it looked like that. I put that mixture in a cake pan, put it in the oven, set the oven on 400. Oh, Don't know what happened. I didn't make a cake, I made a brick. I made a <laughs> and when I took that cake out the oven, it was black. My God, I managed to chisel out a piece. And I bit that cake and I said, Lord, I got to go to the dentist. Oh my God, I was so ashamed of myself. And I was more ashamed when my wife came home when I used one of her prime cake pans. Didn't put no butter in it to cook them. God have mercy. Didn't put nothing in the pan so it could come out. And, and I felt so bad when she told me to get that cake out the pan. My God, I was digging with all I could have. Trying to get that cake to separate from the pan. I had to wind up throwing away the pan and the cake. Of course, I bought a brand new pan. But something is made, and the quality of the end product is based on the utensils used, it's based on the ingredients used, and based on the knowledge of the maker. Oh, y'all gonna keep that in mind. So when God starts talking about truth, everybody said process. Well, right, right. Now, now, let me preach this so we can get out your way and we're gonna praise God. Y'all all right? We were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We all were born with the capacity to sin and, and generational iniquity was all our situation. So we were born behind the eight ball and the truth was not real to us like it should have been. Can I get a witness? So, so when we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, we all had an appetite for a lie. Adam believed the lie and got us all in trouble. Eve believed the lie, got us all in trouble. I can't blame Adam nor Eve because I followed them right down the rabbit hole. And I believe lies as well that got me in trouble. So I come to understand, beloved, that God had to create a process that involves the ingredients of his word. You're not going to be able to be in a good situation to have anything made last without the proper ingredients. So in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. In order to have the right ingredients, the Word is the truth, because there must be irrefutable proof that no matter what comes against this truth, this thing that was spoken is going to last, and not only last, but benefit me despite my original orientation. I've got to have, are y'all hearing me, something that is worthy of switching when I'm now believing to what I should believe. Because I think my beliefs are standard bearing, and I believe my beliefs are worth holding on to. 
So for me to change my beliefs, there's got to be something that was here before I got here. Here, when I'm going through my situation, I'm going to be here when time is over. I can't base my change on a momentary situation. I got to base it on what's going to be here, was here, and will always be here, and I must base on it right now. Yes. Oh, come on, come on. So I got to understand, I need a word. I need the right ingredients. I need the word. I need the correct ingredients. I can't base my life off of lies. I need to know who really loves me. I hope y'all get this. I need to know what love really is. I need to know what sin is and its effects on my life. I need to know the short range effects and the long range effects. And the Bible told me a truth one day when it said that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ my Lord. And then I read the words of Jesus who knew what he was talking about with the main ingredient. And you shall know the truth. And here's the caveat in them. The truth you know will make you free. So I know that God loves me. I know that he has a plan for me. I know that he has the best for me. I know that he's bringing me ginger to a, a good end. I know that despite the devil's lies and deception over my life, that God got a way that the devil can't beat. I know that when the test of time has been applied to circumstance, God always rises to the top because his word says so. He said, I will never leave you. I will never I will forsake you. So I understand that his word is the main ingredient because his word has been time tested, proven, and lasts for all time. So the process involves the ingredient. Then it involves the utensil. Oh God, have mercy. My God, God's word is applied consistently. Oh, the utensil of consistency is what God's word is built upon. The Bible said it this way. Can I preach up in here? Jesus Christ, the same. Yesterday. Yesterday. Today. And forever. Again, transcend the property. Jesus Christ is the Word. Yeah. Jesus Christ, the same. Yes. Yes. So if Jesus Christ is the Word, and if Jesus Christ is the same, that means the Word is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. I know we have terms that sound religious such as present day truth. I know we have words that make folk feel good about current day beliefs and present day understanding. But there's something about the word of God that despite societal changes, I wish y'all would listen to me, despite theological arguments and debates, the word of God will always be the only authority that is unchanged that is immutable and lasts forever. Therefore the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against God. The word of God is what allows my life to build consistency. It's the main ingredient that comes to help me, but the utensil spreads it even over time. Oh God, so the word was good in the 1700s. The same word is good in the 1800s. The same word was good in 500 years BC. The same word will be good in 2025. I wish I had somebody help me as I get ready to close. The word of God is and shall forever be the greatest ingredient ever there is. But the utensil is the everlasting consistency that you can say the same word back then when Jesus first said it and the same word was true when he first said it and it's still true God have mercy right now the same word that he uttered in thousands of years ago it still holds right now so 
I'm so glad that the same word God spoke, although I wasn't there when he said it, I tried it, and I still know the way it works. I tried it and I understand that the word is still true. That's why I can declare with all surety, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He said it then, he meant it then, he means it right now. So that word overholds us. That word over time. My God, that truth. My God is the right ingredient and it's the right utensil. But now let us think about that cake. We need the skill of the maker. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Oh. Oh, yes. Man's words can't be trusted. Nope. Because the word said, the arm of flesh will fail you. Yeah. Man's word can't last forever because somebody will love you today and a new thing coming along, they'll drop you like a hot potato. So I can't believe man's words because we work all day trying to keep it and we say, my bad, will we break it. But I'm so thankful that the maker intricately applied the word and applied consistency and, and the maker was skilled enough that when he saw no other advocate, boy, I'm about to preach, when he saw there was no intercessor, he took up the job himself, made himself of no reputation, came down to 42 generations. He said, I'm not meant to take my life, but I'm laying it down on your behalf. He said, and when you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. He said, as Jesus said, when Jonah was in the belly of the great fish three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Of death, hell, and the grave. The maker used a skill of certainty. He used a skill of truth. And he used a skill of love to make you understand that I know what I'm doing. So that you would never doubt that my skill, my ability is given unto you. And he said, Look at here, the same power that I have. It's the same power that I've given unto you. Power over sickness. Power over disease. Power over every work of the devil. When you speak the truth, God help me preach. The same devil that was bound when I said it will be bound when you say it. When you speak the truth, the same devil that curses your life, I'll destroy his works for you. That's like it was destroyed for me. Can I get a witness up in here? I know the son of saying, then why did this happen? And why did that happen? I don't know why stuff happened, but that don't stop God from being skilled. And everything he said shall come to pass. That's why I like what God said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot or tittle of my word shall go void. God spoke, and all he said shall be exactly as he said. So we have the ingredients. We have the right intentions. Now we have the skill of the maker. He said it. And it shall be. Amen. So what I must do is start eating the cake of the word. Yes, 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 my yes. Lord, my Lord, my Lord. What it won't do is make it fat. Uh -huh. But it is sweeter. Yes, yes. Then the honey and the honey oh my God. What it won't do is weigh it down. But it will make you free.
So because of truth, the word of God is the same yesterday.
For I heard the word say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that he receives from the mouth of God. God bless you. Y'all got the word today. Yeah. Come on, praise God. Please hold up my steps in your 